Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, Retirement Party Podcast. That's right. If you're not uh, watching us in video, almost all of us are wearing our retirement hats. But without further ado, we've got the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing really great. Great to be here. Good to see you. We got Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Very excited to be here today for this one. This is going to be a good one. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm great. Happy to be here. Good to see you. We got Taria putting in the reps, Harris. Taria, how are things? Going well. Excited for today. Fantastic. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are things for with you in Vegas? Getting warm. It's getting warm. We were in the pool earlier this morning, so uh, feeling good, man. Nice and That's rested. Good. And last but not least, you know him. You love him. Your flight's go Sherpa, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, are you excited for this special podcast? I can't wait. So let's just get going. Let's just do it. Today's guest is Roberto Chavez. We're all wearing our retirement hats because let's just let Roberto tell us the story. Roberto, the round table is yours. <laughs> Mark, thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to see everybody here. Uh, it's been a while since we haven't seen each other in person, but yeah, I sent you a, a box a couple of weeks ago announcing uh, my official retirement from the law profession. And so uh, as of last Tuesday, last Tuesday was my last day at the firm. Um, it's, uh, it's been a lot of emotions, all good emotions, but it's, it's, been, it's been a wild ride uh, to say the least. And so, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm extremely excited about all the doors that are gonna be open with all this time and putting more time into the land business and, and, and being more of the CEO of this, of this business. So I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, we've talked about this, but I'll just say it publicly how how proud I am. All of us are, Tate, especially as your as your you know head coach in in coaching, and um, it's it's really why we do what we do, um, and then we get to celebrate the the result of that. And and you're just beginning; you're still just a baby in the land business, and. <laughs> You know, but now instead of crawling, you're walking. And uh, Tate, remember the, uh, and Scott, remember in Tampa, the first boardroom with Roberto? Yeah. And, uh, and you know, he's like, I'm working too much. And it was like, I, th I think at that point, Roberto, were you, well, how many hours a week were you working in the business? Uh, probably 20 or something like that. Between 20 and 25, maybe, but but I don't know that they were the most efficient 20 to 25 hours. Uh, but I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that my head was also at the firm, and you know, you're trying to juggle two 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 big responsibilities at the same time, and it, it makes it a little bit more difficult to really focus in on on the business and and make the time work better for you. All right. Well, let's go around. Because I know we've got questions for you. So let's start with, and he loves when he goes first, the captain, <laughs> the Zen master, Mike Zan. So Mike, first of all, tell us why you're not wearing the retired hat. Well, I still work at the fire department, much to uh, your dismay, I know. And, and you know, I would be retiring early, but my son, Josh, just got on the job. And it's sort of a, it's a legacy thing, right? You want to work with your son, uh, maybe have a few fires together and so on and so forth. So um, it's coming soon. I have the hat. I looked at it. It was like, it's like, it's in the, I know the moment I pull it out, it's going to be very emotional. Uh, so that's why, but I chose to wear my, uh, you know, my, the hat that I have in honor of Scott Todd and all the wisdom from flight school, my captain, my pilot hat. I don't know if this is really what a pilot hat looks like, but it is, it is, this is a form of admiration when I wear this. I know that he sometimes take it, takes it differently, but truly, uh, he has been one of the biggest impacts of my life and my business. So I, this is actually meant to celebrate that. 
Okay. I like how you started your introduction introduction by, you know, kissing up to Scott Todd there. That was really <laughs> classy, Mike. Listen, I've been on the other classy. side of that equation and I'm not going back. <laughs> but <laughs> this is Roberto. So Roberto, first of all, congratulations. Uh, it's been amazing to watch uh, you excel in this business. You know, um, I know you said a little bit about your story, but I don't know. Is there... What, what maybe would be some pivotal points in the land business for you or maybe like a huge obstacle that you overcame that, you know, what was the moment when you knew this was going to be life changing? Uh, it's, it's, it's strange because it, it really was when I did my first deal. Um, when, when I did my first deal and I proved to myself that I could buy a piece of land for 500 bucks and then turn around and sell it for $6,000, $7,000. That to me was was life changing in, in in the way I thought about making money and and another way of making money. And so the the moment I did that first sale for me, it was uh, it was kind of like, what the heck? Why didn't anybody tell me about this before? Like I've been going to school and 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 uh, getting a job and and. And here I am making on one sell what I make in a month or something like that. It, it's, it, it was, it really changed the way I thought about the way a person can make money and make a living. And so that, that to me was like that. I, it, there was no stopping me from the moment I made that first sale and I proved to myself that I could do this business. It was just looking ahead and never looked back. All right. Well, great answer. Yeah, there's a big difference between hearing about the sales we do and then actually participating in one, right? That that proof of concept is is enormous. Yeah, no, no. And once you do it once, I mean, you know you can do it a hundred times, two hundred times, a thousand times. I mean, it's just a matter of doing it that one time. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Dude, buddy. Nightcap OG. What is your question for Roberto? Uh well, Roberto, congratulations. I'm really, really excited for you. Um, you're one of the first person I ever talked to, first people I've ever talked to uh, when I started doing some outreach calls for Mark. So it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, but I guess my question for you is, you know, we all know you're a top performer. I mean, look at what you've done in, in three, four years. So what, what characteristics set you apart from maybe somebody else who, uh, decided it wasn't for them or somebody else maybe is going a little bit slower uh, or somebody who maybe isn't having the experience they want to yet. So what, what sets you apart? What characteristics do you have that, that made this happen? Uh, well, first of all, uh, thanks, uh, Scott. You were like the, the, the one that opened the gates uh, to this business for me. So I'm, I'm really appreciative of that as well, because you, you were the first person that I talked to and you kind of, uh, opened up my eyes as to what this business was uh, after hearing Mark on the podcast that, that I first heard him on and, and you were you were very helpful in giving me that that little extra push that I needed so for for that thank you um, I, I, I honestly don't know and I don't think I have any special skill uh, that anybody else would lack I mean I like I I think it was more the the drive and the desire, and I think if if somebody has the drive and the desire, and and really the passion to get out of the eight to five and just start doing their own thing, as long as you've got that skill, or it's not even a skill, it's probably just a, a that burning desire. As long as you have that, you'll be able to acquire any skill that you need to be successful in this business. So. I think people don't make it in this business just because they probably lack that that true desire to to kind of free themselves from the from the eight to five and start living off this business. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I love that, and you know, I'm just going to jump on the the Mike Zeno bandwagon here and and kiss up to Scott Todd for a moment because you know he gets that question a lot. Um, the, you know, because I think he, Scott, you set, did, did you set the record? It was 17 months, three days to replace your fortune 50 income or whatever it was. Or wait, you're on mute. Or, Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's true. I know people have done it faster than this today, which is no problem. Uh, I think it's really cool when they do that. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think that that's really the, the whole goal is to make it, make the whole thing move faster. Right. 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 But you, you know, you're always talking about that, that burning desire. People ask me, you know, what, what separates, you know, somebody who's successful from unsuccessful. First of all, I don't think there's anything such thing as unsuccessful. It, you're going to learn something. You're going to grow either way. But I definitely think that, you know, in like conventionally speaking, if your destination is, I want to quit my job, I want to replace my income, I want to retire my spouse, whatever that is, I always say it's grit, the ability to, you know, get back up when times are tough. And, um, but I think that without that burning desire, that big why, as the core fundamental principle, you won't have grit. You won't get back up. And so um, I, I'm really glad that you, you spoke to that, Roberto, because, um, you know, it, I, I would have just, you know, been like, oh, no, if you're like, yeah, it's because I have a legal background. <laughs> no, there's that's 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 just a little tool in the toolbox that that helps with the business. But that that's not really going to I mean, if that were the case, there would be a bunch of attorneys doing this business if they were the, the key to success in this in this business and, and that's that's not it at all. All right. Let's go to the technician, Eric Peterson. All right. So as everybody has said, congratulations, Roberto. We're glad to see you at this point. You've you've done really well in the land business and and that's impressive. Um I'm sure that in your career you had to wear a suit or at least a shirt and tie every day. So I want to know, what are you going to do with all those? Are you going to sell them on eBay or, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to wear that stuff anymore. It's yeah. I don't know good. what I'm going to do. It's a, it's an extra wardrobe there that I, I don't know what, what, what I can, it's for sale. If anybody here wants it, <laughs> maybe, maybe you doing. could raise enough to buy a piece of land. Yeah, you never know. That'd be that'd be pretty ironically cool to sell all the suits and, <laughs> and buy some land with that. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just be saving them for weddings and stuff where I actually have to suit up again. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to do with that. It takes up some space, so I, I I need to get rid of some of it. But it feels it it, it felt nice when uh, I, I was actually picking up some ties because I I went to a wedding two weeks ago. And I was like, I, I don't think I had really thought about the fact that I'm I'm not gonna have to worry about picking ties for for work anymore. And it's uh it's a pretty cool feeling. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, let me ask a, a real question. So um, you know, I think something that uh that we hear a lot from from people just coming into the the land um world, if you will, is you know, there's there's this concern or this um you know, fear of, well, if I buy this piece of land, you know, I might make a mistake. Something could go wrong. So, so talk to us about maybe a mistake you may, made along the way. And I'm sure you were able to solve it if you did. So, so give us a little story there. Yeah. So I, I think the, the biggest quote unquote land mistake that I had uh, in the land business was buying land out in a county out in the middle of nowhere um, from a buyer that sold another piece of property where I do buy. And so I just had to hold on to that property for a very, very long time. I'm talking about probably close to two years that I just had it on me. Um, and it took a while, but it eventually sold as well. But it, it was just kind of on, on the back burner of my inventory. And I, I really wasn't uh, too focused on, on something. I didn't have a good buyer's list for that property. It was just uh, kind of in the back of my mind. Uh, and eventually I, I unloaded it with kind of a package deal with some other land, still made money off of it, but it just wasn't a, a piece of property that I was going to be working on, uh, the area I wasn't going to be working on. So it, it really didn't make sense for me to keep it. But it was kind of a newbie mistake in the sense that it was – he offered it. It seemed like a good deal. And I just jumped on it without having really studied the, the county or or comps or or anything like that. But I mean, in, in, in any other business, I think you make a mistake like that and it, it could be pretty bad. 
in terms of, of lost money, but in this case, it, it really, I didn't feel the impact. Awesome. All right, Taria, putting in the reps, Harris. Oh, congratulations, Roberto. Um, Roberto was actually one of the first people outside of uh, coaches that we spoke to um, about the land business. We met him in our first boot camp. So it's awesome to see how well you were doing then and just how much further you've come. So congrats. Thank so you. You. now that you've retired, um, how are you kind of reallocating your time towards the business? Are you spending a little more time, you know, focusing on how to make it better? Are you spending less time? How does your retirement now, how has how your time shifted now that you've retired? Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still working on that in terms of how I'm, I'm going to schedule my time and, and, in terms of uh, how much time I'm going to be putting into the the, the business right now, I, I it, it's I just stopped last Tuesday, so I'm kind of in a transition mode. I'm going to be taking a, a a pretty long trip here for for the rest of the summer. So coming <laughs> nice. back in August, that's that's probably when when I'll 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 get my schedule in order. But right now, I'm just kind of enjoying the the. The, the flow and the, the high of, of having quit the job. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into the, the nitty gritty of the schedule probably um, in the next couple. I'll, I'll probably plan it while I'm away. I'll, I'll think about that while I'm somewhere uh, having some dreams. I'll, I'll start thinking about that. Nice. We, we can start a new site instead of where's Waldo, where's Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> So I know you're going to go to two different countries. Where where are you going again? Yeah, so we're going, Maria and I, we're going uh, all of June, well, most of June to Denmark. Um, we've got friends that live there, so we're going to go visit. We're renting an Airbnb for, for around 28 days there. And then we're going to Croatia for the month of July. And so we're just going to go chillax out there. And there's no issues with COVID and restrictions. No, Denmark is the only one that that it's right now we need to have a worthy purpose. And so our, our friends have a business over there. So if worse comes to worse, we're going to go there to have a business meeting. Um, but it looks like they are going to open it up to vaccinated U.S. citizens in the next week or so. And Croatia is open uh, to, to tourists. And so. Uh, Croatia is OK. Denmark is the only one that's still a little bit up in the air, but it, I think we can We'll be able to get in either way. Awesome, awesome. Well, I know, uh, you know, I don't even know how long Tate and I have been talking about you. So this is, uh, I know this is very, very personal for Tate. I love it when you call me Big Papa Litchfield. So Tate, the floor is yours. Oh no, I'm just, I'm stoked to be doing this call. I haven't looked, you know, I woke up this morning and I remembered that. Today's call was with Roberto, and it's been probably one of the most exciting, you know, calls that I've looked forward to in a long, long time. So it's a, uh, it's truly a great pleasure and an honor to be here talking with you today. And honestly, you know, at the end of the day, we're proud of you, man. You did it. You executed. You sat down. You set goals, and you accomplished it. So I mean, hats off to you. Well deserved. Bravo, Chapo. Like, good job, man. And. I'm excited to see kind of what the future holds for you. And that kind of lines up with my question and what's next? I mean, you've done so well over the last three years, staying focused. Are you staying focused in the raw vacant land space or are you getting shiny object syndrome and going to go dabble in other things? What, what's, what's the plan? Yeah, I, I, well, first of all, thanks take for, for the kind words. I mean, I, I owe a lot of this to, to you as well. You helped me focus, hyper-focus and, set those specific goals month after month for two years. Uh, and that was key to, to, to be having this conversation today. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's been kind of on the back of my mind. I've, I've been, it, 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 it's, it's a mental struggle, I guess, because I, now I have more, well, I've, I've been having more time and then any podcast that Mark has, uh, I'll go in and, try to find out more information about the guy that they had and what it is that they're doing. And, and it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, 
uh, I have to pull myself back and be like, wait, wait, you don't, I mean, what are you going to do? Start all over again, retire again, or like, well, what's the whole point here? And so I have to kind of pull myself back and say, hold on, this is, this is what you've learned. This is your bread and butter selling raw land. You need to stay focused on that. And so it's, it's a little hard because there are stuff out there that seem really attractive and, you know, sometimes you want to diversify a little bit, but, but I don't, uh, I, I think what this business has given me is way too much for me to allow myself to wander off and try to do something completely off track from this. Um, it's, it's, it's shown me too much as to what I can do. And I don't think I'm going to be letting it go uh, anytime soon. So, uh, yeah. but, but if Enjoy there is that freedom, out there, you're like, to spend some time with your folks and eat, what's that? Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I mean, enjoy that freedom that you've earned, right? Like, go spend some time with the folks, go to the farm, hang out, relax. You know, you've earned it, man. Yeah, no, hey. that's that's what we're trying to do. And that's why we decided to take this little uh, little trip around that we can. Uh, it'll be hard to find another, just for both Maria and myself, a time where we can both uh, take two months off. Uh, it, it, I mean, maybe we'll have it again in two years and I'll let you guys know, but right now I'm guessing <laughs> this is going to become a yearly thing. I'm guessing, you know, <laughs> March started off this way. I'm going to take two weeks off. And now he's up to like, what, five weeks in a row that he like is MIA and it's like a yearly thing for him. And you know what? Why not? Why not, man? Go enjoy. You know, for the record, Roberto is not a trust fund kid either. He worked hard at this and uh, he bootstrapped it for a long, long time. And so, as he said, if he can do it and I can do it and, you know, Mark can do it, anybody else can do it, too. It's pretty cool. It's good stuff, man. Proud of you. Thank you, Tate. Thanks. Yeah, no, it's... got to go to dinner. Come to Vegas, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have so many thoughts, but, um, you know, Roberto, if you are struggling with the stillness, vox me. I'll help you. Because it's, 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 it's a thing. You, you know, for, you know... I don't know. We're just, we feel badly for not doing, doing, doing. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes to just be still and just think and look at your business at the macro level and see, okay, what's the lever I can pull that's really going to make the biggest impact. It takes time. And, um, but I can help you with it. Take can help you with it. We all can help you with it. So, <laughs> I'll take, um, I'll take but it, you know, it's, it is a thing for sure. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad Tate brought up that question. All right, Scott Todd. Still can't hear you, Scott. Well, there you go. There we go. Tate, thanks uh, for stealing my question. Appreciate that, buddy. And uh, <laughs> thanks for leaving me to struggle here. Roberto, my question is simple. Are you married or engaged yet? <laughs> yeah, so we, we 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 got engaged. Maria and I got engaged uh, right before the pandemic, and then uh, so we weren't able to schedule or plan a wedding. And but we got too anxious, and so we actually got married uh, through the court system uh, back in April of this year. And we're planning our wedding for sometime next year in Mexico. So. Nice. Uh, we, nice. We just we, we we just wanted to do it already, and COVID wasn't uh, being too friendly, and we weren't sure when uh, they were gonna we were gonna be able to plan something nice. So we said, let's just do it, and then we'll do the party later. On. Look, Mark, look at look at this. Okay, not only is this a retirement party, it should be a wedding party too. <laughs> look, I mean, where's my wedding hat? Uh, you know what? There's always next week, and we'll wear tuxes. Oh boy. Tria, Tria on put on a, on a on a dress, a formal dress. Well, all hey, like Mark, powder blue Texas, like from Dumb and Dumber. Mark, we just talked about this. Like none of us have formal clothing anymore. So we can't we can't get too fancy on this. I don't have any fancy clothes. Uh, you, know, say, you don't have I'll one suit? Close to you guys. <laughs> I, have I don't have a I have zero suits. Listen, just suit. come. Just come to the wedding dress, dress in land geek style. That's all you got to do. <laughs> all right. I, I, I've, got, I've got a question for Roberto, though. Hey, it's my turn. 
What are you doing? I thought you, I thought you asked him the question. Eric got a layup, dumb question. I mean, I mean <laughs> Eric got a silly question. I mean, what about me? Oh, jeez. <laughs> the floor is yours. Oh, okay, thank you. So, Roberto, congratulations on retirement. Congratulations on engagement and wedding. Okay. So you took action. You took action getting married. You took action with, um, you, you know, with, with your land business. So other than just take action, there are people listening to this right now who are just getting going. What advice do you have for them? Not take action. What advice do you have for them that, that they can, that will help them be here on this call in their own retirement party? I don't know, in three months. No, I'm kidding. At some point in the future. That's a tough one. <laughs> That's what happens when you go last. <laughs> um, so aside from from taking action is the is the is the question, right? Yeah. Aside from just taking, and if you want that, you can have it. But essentially, like, I well, mean, no, I, I I I think I, I I got one. So so, and it comes back to to probably Tate's uh, Tate's question, and, and it's related in that. I mean, it's it's one thing to take action, but it's another thing to take focused action in the sense that you're not out dabbling with other stuff that's taking time and energy away from this specific business model. Uh, because, I mean, I'm sure that had I been doing, I, I don't know, whatever other mobile homes or something else, I, I during the same time I was doing this business, I don't think I would have gotten here as, as quickly as I wanted. Um, and, and so it's not just taking action, but it's, it's a focused action where you're just doing this, whatever time you have left from your normal day, uh, which mine was in the evenings, uh, to just do this business until it starts being something that you see yourself that you, you'll be able to retire one day uh, <laughs> from it. So I think that that's that that would be a uh, an advice that I would give. Awesome, thank you. I love it. I love it. All right, do I get a two part question then, Scott Todd? It, look, it's your it's your show. You do whatever you want, but all I wanted was my same equal status to Eric. So don't. <laughs> uh, all right, fine, fine. Um, all right, so Roberto, I just want to know real quickly, what was your biggest fear in? in making that leap, um, in, in, in just quitting your job. If you got the security, it's, it's, it's a profession. It's a, it's a noble, worthy profession. I can only imagine the conversation you'd had with your parents and Maria, um, her parents, like, <laughs> you know, Oh, you're marrying this attorney. Let's go. Oh wait, no, he's quitting. He's going to be a land investor. Yeah, well, I mean, and I and I think uh, the the fear. I mean, I'll be honest. I, I think I could have quote unquote retired uh, maybe six months a year ago, uh, and and kind of bootstrapped it a little bit more than that. Uh, but ever since I started the land business, and ever ever since I made that first sale, it was uh, I I kind of knew that at one point in the future it was going to be. A decision to be made where I was going to leave the security of the eight to five, a, a check every two weeks, health care benefits, dental benefits. Uh, you know that check is going in every week, every two weeks, and it pays for the mortgage and it pays for the expenses. Uh, and and I'd be lying if I said I didn't still have a little bit of that anxiety that you know I just quit my job and I'm I'm going to rely on this and. And I'm, I'm, I'm just going to build this even more, but, but it's just up to me. I mean, I, it's, it, it, just saying it out loud even gives me a little bit of anxiety in the sense that, you know, I've had a job for seven and a half years, the same job. Uh, it, it, it's hard to leave something so secure, but at the same time, it was a no brainer because I was able to build this whilst having that job. Imagine what I can build just doing this full time. And so uh, the fear I think is, is always going to be there and I don't shy away from it because I think it also lights the little fire of, Hey man, I mean, 
nothing's for sure in this world. And so you've got to keep pushing and keep making sales and keep buying land and just keep building on it uh, so that you never have to go back to the to the eight to five. And so uh, I I think the fear is going to be there, but I I, I think I, I've, I'm, I'll learn and I'm learning to, to embrace it a little bit. Yeah, Scott Bossman, has has your fear ever ever creep up with you? Because you're, um, you're you're in a noble worthy profession as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, every once in a while, I think, uh, I mean, I, I miss it honestly. So, you know, I I spent 20 years of my life in healthcare, and uh, some days I wake up and I I miss uh, working with patients. But then I start thinking about it. I'm like, I don't miss working with them 40 hours a week. I, I'd gladly go in for an afternoon here or there and keep up my skills and uh, continue to serve in that regard. So I still have the, you know, the luxury of being able to dabble in it a little bit here and there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fearful thing handing in that work badge and, and stepping out the door on your, you know, on your own knowing that, uh, hey, I don't have, you know, I don't have a health care plan in place. I don't have a retirement plan in place. I don't have all this stuff in place that's always been there for me for 20 years. Now it's on me. But like Roberto says, uh, you know, you you spend focus energy on that stuff. You get that stuff set up and then you get all those things off your plate. And now I walk around the house and I'm like, I feel like uh, I need to find something more to do. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I need to like join Habitat for Humanity or that type of thing. And those are the conversations I'm having now, which is really cool to think about, hey, I could take a day out of my life and just go volunteer somewhere. So that's kind of my next next phase and things, I think. Yeah, I do, I do feel like it's a good point, Scott. I do feel like, you know, when you get to Roberto's, you know, point in life, it is an, an existential threat. Like, okay, I can work anywhere I want with whomever I want, whenever I want, and I can do whatever I want in life. I'm totally free. Now what do I do? Mm -hmm. It's, it is a new, I'd say the, uh, the best problem to have, yet it's still a problem. So um, it's, you know, so Roberto, do you know what you want to do besides <laughs> travel? Well, for now, it's traveling. Right now, uh, okay. it, it, it's always been kind of the, uh, and and it's it's strange because when Maria is like, "Well, are you sure we're okay doing this?" I'm like, "We, I sacrificed part of our time in our relationship during the last three years, and we were both on board." And it's like, "Look, after work, you can't necessarily see each other every day because I got this business." She was all on board with it. And I'm telling you, well, now we're just reaping the, the fruits of, of the time that we spent away. And I, we were building this business together and trying to enjoy a little bit. We'll come back and we'll keep building it more. But right now it's a little bit of time to, to relax. I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to feel when I'm six weeks into a two week, two month vacation. I'm going to maybe go crazy or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll deal with that problem when I get to it. I'm taking my laptop in case I want to work a lot uh but but yeah it's uh right now that's that's what we want to do and and we'll see what what comes up next in terms of of what we want to do all right i have one more question all right knowing what you know now is there anything you would have gone back and changed or would you get what what advice would retired roberto have given newbie roberto about the land business Well, I mean, I don't know if that it's the best answer, but retired Roberto would have wanted UB Roberto to be more organized uh, in in starting the business. I mean, it became like throughout halfway through the business, it was chaos, paperwork everywhere, uh, not knowing what I was going to have to pay in taxes. Uh, it, it was just kind of a, a, a whole mess. And I, I probably would advise him to, to spend a little bit more time in trying to organize because that will save a lot of time uh, later on and some headaches. Uh, but I mean, I, I wish I could tell newbie Roberto to learn about the business three years before he learned about it, uh, but I guess I can't change that. <laughs> but that would be the advice of, 
I've learned about this. I hear about all these students that are like 18, 19, 20, 21, and I'm so envious. I'm like, gosh, darn, I wish I would have started this business when I was 20 years old. But okay, so it's okay. Uh, I'm happy. <laughs> no, it's it's great. It's great. Well, I, I think this is a phenomenal roundtable podcast. But of course, we're now at that point in the podcast where we're going to ask Roberto for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else, action. And I think your mentorship has been incredible. And we're so, so excited for you in your future. But one more little nugget of advice for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives out. Before you tell us, I'm going to give you a little bit more time to think about it because we have to talk about our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. June 30th is the next class. Schedule a call with the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, Dude Buddy Night at Cap OG, Scott Bossman, and see if this is right for you. But I can tell you that that tuition ain't going to cost you nothing. You're going to make it back, guaranteed in writing, 180 days or less, cash or terms deals. Just show us your work. So learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Landgeek.com forward slash training. Roberto Chavez. Roberto Retired Chavez, what is your tip of the week? Uh, so I figured I would be put on the spot having heard the podcast. Uh -huh. so I did come prepared uh, <laughs> knowing that I would be the one giving the tip. And I did think about it and I was trying to think what would be the best tip that I could give. And, you know, I mean, the business is comprised basically of buying land and selling land. And I, I personally believe that selling land should be the last thing you try to um, delegate or hire people to do. Uh, and so well, we're having a technical glitch with Roberto. Well, isn't that convenient? That was like that, the best tip was about to come out. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's not really stuck. He's just real still right now. <laughs> No, wait, he's back. He's back. Wait, 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 we lost you for a second. <laughs> so I don't know where you lost me. No, the last thing you would outsource is selling. selling. It would be selling. And so uh, what helped me kind of, because I read this book that I'm about to tell you probably a year into my land business and kind of using the skills and the tips that were in this book really, really helped me make more sales and be able to talk to people more because that's a skill that I really didn't have. I mean, I was more of a bookworm uh, studying in law school and then in a law firm, you don't really talk to people and try to sell something. So the tip is never, never split the difference um, by Chris Voss. It's really, really, really good. And I think anybody who's in the land business should read it. I think it'll help them improve their their negotiation skills uh especially when it comes to well both i mean i guess when you're buying land it, it'll help but for me it helped me a lot more when when i was trying to trying to sell land i love it i'm gonna have to revisit that book now because i i think when i listened to it, it was maybe a year year and a half ago um i think scott todd you you took the master class right no <laughs> you read the book I read the book. I think I recommended the book. You did recommend the book on the deal, uh, the tip of the week. On the tip of the week, I did not do the master class. I don't know who took the master, but the master class is on masterclass.com, right? It is on masterclass.com. I'm pretty sure, and I'm, I'm going to put on my DJ voice now. I'm pretty sure, Scott Todd, that you told me you were taking the master class. I think so. That's an inside joke for everybody that's read the book. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I told you that. I'm pretty sure you did. Can you prove it? Nope, Matt I Forbes, can't. Matt Forbes may have taken that. Maybe it was Matt Forbes. See? I don't know. Well, you know what? Look, it's nice because I'm going to remember this day because uh, I haven't been wrong in like three years. <laughs> so, good, good on me. Um, 
Are, are there any final words of encouragement, advice for Roberto before we end this epic retirement party roundtable podcast? Um, Zen Master. No, just uh, don't disappear on us. Stay connected. Uh, don't go disappear into the world somewhere. Stay connected to us. <laughs> I will. I will, Mike. I'm not going away. <laughs> Dude, buddy, any last words of encouragement? Uh, just enjoy enjoy your your honeymoon from work. Um, it was a, it was a joyous time in my life, and enjoy your real honeymoon. And then, um, yeah, just uh, like Mike said, stay in touch. Hope to see you in person uh, soon at a boot camp. For sure, Eric, the technician. Yeah, just again, congratulations. Um, you know, we're we're looking forward to continuing to see you around in the community. And enjoy your time away. Have a have a great summer, and we'll see you at boot camp soon. Got it. Thanks, Eric. Taria. Um, thanks for being inspirational. Like, thanks for just making it look easy. Although we know, you know, it was hard work. Thanks for just helping those who are still trying to accomplish that goal. It's good to see someone who actually made it over. So, thanks. Thank you. Say hi to Landon from. I will. <laughs> Tate, congrats, brother! I'm happy for you. Well deserved, and uh, enjoy. We'll talk shortly. For sure. Thanks, Tate. Scott Todd, Roberto, congratulations! As I said, on many fronts, and uh, just just keep going, man. This is this is just the tip of the iceberg. And what time do we leave for that trip again? Around <laughs> <laughs> noon, Scott. We'll see you at the El Paso airport. <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you over there, brother. <laughs> well, Roberto, welcome to the club. Thank you so much for being inspiration. Um, for everybody that's listening, uh, you know, and I, I know a lot of you actually found us through a podcast Roberto did on the Side Hustle podcast. And even to this day, people are still contacting Roberto that listen to Nick Loper's podcast. I'm like, oh, yeah, I found you guys through Roberto. And it, it was powerful then because you you were working it as a side hustle, and now we see how you've developed and grown. I personally know that this is just the beginning. I cannot wait to see the land empire you build, and uh, and you know it's it it like Teria said, it's just such an inspiration. So for everyone listening, um, you know, go and do likewise. Uh, just like Tate said, there's nothing special about any of us. Um, it just takes that burning desire and that grit. You combine that with a little bit of training, a little know-how, and the world is your oyster. And next thing you know, we're going to have a retirement party for you, dear listener. And so just let us know uh, because, you know, everything's better in life. when not, You don't just solve your money problems, but then you also solve your time problems and then you then get to decide how you want to live your life, what you want to do, and have total freedom, which is really the whole point. So that being said, dear listener, if you got value out of this, to give us three favors, follow us, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course. And... Um, it really helps us. So I guess let's all do this together. One, two, three. Let's let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. ring. Is this I love it. Where we throw our hands. <laughs> you know, like, like like graduation. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there it is. Eric, that was brilliant. <laughs> you guys didn't throw your hats. I'm Mark and I are the and boss. And I Dick. threw my hand. My hair is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a problem. I don't understand why you do. <laughs> Jeez. Look, I, I embrace my hat head. A lot of people don't like it. I'll go to the grocery store like this. I'm like, how come you don't have a hat head? I mean, I'll look at them like, you know, there's something wrong with them to walk out with perfectly coiffed hair. Like, you know. It's a, it's a stoic challenge for sure. So, um, 
all right, now I know like I can see like we're all on our computer, like, okay, we got Denmark, we got Croatia. Where else are we all going? We're just, like, just going to jump on the Roberto bandwagon. We're, I mean, it's cool to bump into you guys over there. That'd be pretty amazing. Awesome. I mean, Tate, I, I mean, I, I just got my passport um, renewed. Does everybody have, else have their passport? Mine needs to be renewed. You need to be renewed. Tree, you got yours. Too. Sky, you got to renew yours. Eric, you got yours. Yeah, I think it's still good. Mike. Yes, I do have my passport. I mean, what passport. we should do is go uh, with our tour guide, Roberto Chavez, down to Mexico. Show us a good time. Exactly. That's what we need to do. I love Mexico. And to go with a local, somebody who knows the area, where to eat, what to avoid, man, that's priceless right there. Yeah. You set the date, Tate. You set the date, except for the summer. Set the date. <laughs> <We'll do it. laughs> What if we did like a be, a, a, a land geek, a land geek boot camp in like Mexico? Would we go to Mexico City? Where would we go? Oh, you know, if we if you did a land geek boot camp, Mexico, probably the best option would be somewhere in like Cancun or Playa del Carmen, somewhere there. Yeah, a pause. You, you got to be careful, there. Roberto, because unlike you, I'm not. I got no uh, no issues with tons of free time. I know you're still going to be adjusting, but for me, it's like, I'm okay with that. So you just, you know, you say open invitation. I, I probably really will take you up on that. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Let's um, go. Um, we're, we're both a flight away from Mexico City or Guadalajara or Cancun right. or any of those cities. So, I mean, totally doable. I love yeah. it. Scott, Scott, do you, do you remember when you quit? Like, did you lose friends? Like, was it like, was it weird, Scott Todd? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's, um, it's. I mean, I it was weird because like other people kept working, and then I went off in a different path. And I mean, I don't know what happened to people. Uh, lost touch with them, and you know, I think that that's the thing is, you you spend so much time at work. That's where a lot of your friends are. I mean, you know, like he, people that you know, like and you know, know and trust and like. These are the people that you hang out with, uh, other than your family, the most. And some might say that you hang out with them more than your family. And so it's kind of weird. And I was looking the other day because I was looking at something with with Hertz, and then I'm like, man, nobody I know still works here. I don't know where anybody is. It's like a completely different place because well, it's like anything else. The world just goes on. So it does take some adjustment. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I remember going to matinees and I felt like an extra on the set of Cocoon. It was me and like, <laughs> you know, That's Wilford old. Brimley. That's an oldie, Cocoon. And yeah, yeah, but like, I, 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 like 10% of our audience probably even got that joke. But IMDb, IMDb Cocoon. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, Roberto. It's going to be a thing, You're, but it's it's going to be so good. Colors yeah. are going to be more vibrant. Food's going to taste better. <laughs> what's and, what's exciting is that I don't think, except from the people in this call, like my family and my friends, they're like, "Oh, that's cool." Like, yeah, you. I mean, you're, you you bought the law firm and you're flipping land. That's that's cool. But they don't kind of it's they they don't get as excited as you guys do. <laughs> it's kind of. Like, <laughs> Guys, this is like pretty cool. I mean, what's going on? Why isn't anybody getting this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, and we all know, know what it took. It's yeah. like, we're all, it's, it's like, you know, like we all went through like boot camp together or something. Like we're like, all, like, all like war buddies. It's like, <laughs> That's right. you know, it, it's a simple model, but we all know it ain't easy right. for sure. Um, and, you, you know, you got to do a bunch of stuff uh, to get to this point. So, well, we'll just end it here. Congratulations, Roberto. And um, we'll see you soon. And enjoy your amazing summer. And uh, we'll, we'll be following you for sure. You got it. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Roberto. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. 
Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Read and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.